So I want to talk to you today about whether you should have your amalgam fillings removed or not. So it's a big question and it's one that many dentists will argue and argue with each other about. So I thought I'd come on the show Exposed Teeth tonight and just let you know a little bit of background and information around the topic. Well, I'll tell you who I am. I'm a holistic dentist. I qualified as a dentist in 1992 and I've been working holistically since 2000. And in that time, I've helped several thousand people remove mercury fillings from their teeth. I think I've done nearly 16,000 amalgam filling removals by now. And so it's my role to want to educate and help people understand that dentistry is part of their health care and that what goes in their mouth can impact on their health and well-being. So I'm going to talk about dental amalgam and whether you should get it replaced today. So mercury is used in dental amalgam and this is the main issue. It's linked to many health problems. Those fillings consist of about 50% mercury and that mercury leaches out as a vapour every time you have something warm, you have friction or chewing on your teeth, so even brushing your teeth will release mercury vapour. Yet dentists are still placing amalgam fillings in people's teeth and telling them it's perfectly safe. So why is it that holistic dentists, naturopaths and lots of doctors are saying you should have your amalgam removed? Who's right? Is it the holistic side or is it the conventional dentist? Well, why do dentists use dental amalgam? Well, it's used to repair cavities, you know, caused by tooth decay. It's not new. It was invented around 150 years ago. Dentists were using it back then. And neither is this argument new about whether you should or shouldn't have amalgam. So about half of amalgam is made of mercury and the rest is made from other metals such as silver, tin and copper. And dentists say, well, look, it's the strongest, it's the cheapest, and it's the longest lasting filling in the business. And I don't think we can really argue with that, but does that make it a good reason to continue using it? You know, there, there are no white filling materials out in the market and ceramics and all sorts of things that can do the same job. So in the UK, for example, and I worked there, I grew up there. In the UK, the National Health Service won't pay you as a dentist to fill a back tooth with anything other than amalgam. In the US, health funds and insurance companies dictate what the dentist can and can't fill the teeth with and to keep costs down, they dictate that they should use amalgam. But in the past 20 years, Mercury has been identified as an environmental hazard and it's been linked to things like Alzheimer's disease, multiple sclerosis, kidney damage, brain damage and so on and so forth. There was a treaty called the Minyata Convention on Mercury and that was agreed to by the um, United Nations Environmental Programme. And they were committed to reducing mercury use worldwide, including in dentistry. So there's been this treaty signed to phase out the use of amalgam fillings, but there hasn't been a time frame put on it. Now in Europe, they have banned the use of amalgam fillings in children, the elderly and pregnant women. I believe New Zealand are also following suit. So you're starting to see that there are shifts and New Zealand have said categorically we're concerned about the health effects of this stuff and so has Europe. So should you worry about having a mouthful of mercury? Well the mercury in the fillings releases slowly over time. It's, it releases like this low level of mercury vapour and that gets absorbed through your breath into your lungs and into your bloodstream and then it's taken into your kidneys, your brain, your liver and your gut. A mercury vapour is associated with harm in the kidneys and the brain. But dentistry says, look, even if you have lots of fillings, the vapour release is just so tiny, it's so low, it's not going to cause any harm. Yet, when you read information from the World Health Organisation, they state there is no safe exposure to mercury. They say there is zero level at which it does not do any harm. So even just a small amount of mercury is causing damage. 
So if you go along to your mainstream dentist and you ask about getting your amalgam fillings removed, they're going to recommend not to replace them. You know, they're going to say, no, we're not going to remove them. But on the other hand, dentistry also recommends not to place or remove amalgam fillings in pregnant women due to the theoretical risk to the unborn baby. Dentistry, as I've just touched upon, is saying let's avoid the use of amalgam in children and the elderly and also the medically compromised. So like somebody with poor kidney function, for example, it would be indicated not to use amalgam in them. So there's been some scientific reports that claim it's safe, but a paper in the Journal of Occupational Medicine and Toxicology criticises a lot of these reports, citing that there was poor research when it comes to claims that mercury is safe. Now, no mainstream dental organisations recommend you replace your amalgam fillings. As long as they're in good condition and there's no decay beneath them, they say you should leave them behind. Yet, the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology, which is a research group of scientists, medics and dentists, beg to differ. And they state in their research and position papers the mercury is a neurotoxin and dental amalgams pose a significant health risk. So drilling out amalgam fillings is a time when you lose healthy tooth, even if the dentist drills very safely. So the process is going to compromise a little bit of tooth structure and Having it done will also expose you to more mercury vapour than if you just didn't touch them and left them alone. However, if we remove them following exceedingly strict guidelines called SMART protocols, which means safe mercury amalgam removal technique, and utilising specialised protective equipment, we can reduce your exposure and the exposure of the dentist and their team to mercury when those fillings get removed. So I guess the question comes around to, so should you get your amalgam fillings removed? At the end of the day, that's a choice only you can make. However, if you do decide to have it done, or you need to have an amalgam filling replaced because there's decay, breakage, or issues with the tooth, you should be asking to have it done safely to minimize your exposure to mercury. Now I would say, if you've got more than small, four small amalgam fillings, the amount of mercury being released from those is significant and it's accumulating in your body over time. And we don't know what impact that is gonna have on your health and well-being. So it's a little bit like saying, well, I smoke 20 cigarettes a day and I'm, I seem okay, I'm in good health but what legacy is that setting you up for as you age? And that's my question with amalgam fillings. Whilst you may seem fit and well now, what impact is that accumulation of a toxic heavy metal having on your body? So when it comes to getting your amalgam fillings replaced, I urge you to seek out a well-qualified holistic dentist who is SMART certified. Ask all the questions around, what are you gonna use? How are you gonna protect me? What are you going to place back in my tooth? Do your research, find out for yourself and come to your own decision. I'm Dr. Rachel Hall. This is Exposed Teeth. If you'd like to leave any comments or ask any questions, then feel free to do so and I'll answer them. I may even do a show specially for you. So thank you very much for tuning in. And if you do have any questions for me, then please reach out here on Facebook or you can always give my clinic a call 0737201811